The summer winds blowing into the River City bring historic new leadership to city council. Two African-American men will have the top two spots. We are joined by incoming city council president, Sam Newby. We're also asking for the latest in the city's reaction to this housing disaster. Council member Jacoby Pittman explains what she expects to happen at Hilltop Village Apartments. Plus, a big vision laid out for the North Bank of Jacksonville. Developer Steve Atkins is in studio, fully aware of the challenges to the plan. All of that on This Week in Jacksonville. We're so glad that you're with us today. Jacksonville City Council leadership changes annually. The new term begins July 1st. Last month, the 19 council members voted to install Sam Newby as president and Terrence Freeman as vice president. Mr. Newby joins us once again here on our show. So the installation coming soon, yes. uh, coming this, this week. We, and as I understand it, this will be the first time in Jacksonville's history as a right. city two black council members serve at the same time as president and vice president. Yes. What does that mean to you? Well, first of all, it's historic. Um, to have two uh, black councilmen serve on leadership. And also, you know, the consolidated city of Jacksonville is over 52 years old. It's the first time and only, it's only been three African-American to serve as president. And so I also want to tell you a story. I remember my mom, when I first got elected, she came in my office and she was crying. And I said, well, mom, why are you crying? She said, when I first came to Jacksonville as a little girl, I couldn't come in this building. And now my son has an office in this building. Wow. So I know... You know, she passed last year, so I know she's up in heaven saying, wow, my son is leading city council. Wow. That is a, that's a moving story about what your mom said to you. Thank you for sharing that. What, is, what does it mean to you in terms of where we stand as a city when it comes to race relations and having uh, men of color in leadership for the city council now? Well, it shows that Jacksonville is moving in a new direction, and it shows that people understand that you know, it, it doesn't matter what color you is. And I also want to say the reason why me and Terrence got elected, not because we're African-Americans, that we're qualified candidates that happen to be African-American. Yeah, an, an important point for people to, to know about. Here's a photo of you and, and Terrence, and I believe this was the night that the vote was taken here. Right. That was uh, sent out on social media. Uh, that is an enduring image, I think, for a lot of people, people. who say, yeah, going, going in, a, in the right direction. Talk to me about uh, what you plan as city council president in this year that you've got, the term starting July 1st. What are the specific goals that we'd, you, you would have for Well, city the council? first goal, I want to make sure each of the council members achieve their goals first, because if they achieve their goal first, then city of Jackson move forward. One of the things that I'm going to be working on is infrastructure and also with, with SEPT is phase out because that's real important that we need for our citizens. Also economic development and even a um, small business loan for our uh, minority district that really needs it. Yeah, so you mentioned one of those things, economic development. Development in general is something that a lot of people, they've got mixed views on. We've heard about the Jaguars recently. They've got a proposal that is uh, starting to work its way through some of the processes as DIA and what have you. Later on in our show, we're going to talk with Steve Atkins about uh, this proposal that he's got that is not to that point yet. But what do you think about uh, development like the shipyards that we're showing right now? The Jaguars say they've got a plan and they want to make it happen. I think we need a development. And one of the things that I'm going to do, I'm going to put a... a a downtown um, committed together of three councilmen to look at how Jacksonville can make downtown better because that's one of the missing pieces that we don't have a vibrant downtown. And so that's one of my goals is to make downtown more viable and also that bring more people downtown and more people living downtown. Yeah, so we have heard ideas. I've lived here 10 years. You've been here longer than that, sir. Uh, we've heard people with plans and then they don't really happen. Some of the pushback that we hear is when uh, people want a public-private partnership. So well, what do you say to the folks who say, I don't want taxpayer money to go to this. Why is taxpayer or incentives, why is that Im important? Well, it's important because in most major cities, you know, you have the public-private partnership. And that's essential um, to make a city better. So it's, it's really important. And, and I do believe in that. And we have to invest in our city. How will you know uh, when too much uh, or when so much is too much, how would you know when, hey, uh, a developer wants too much from the city to make their project happen? Well, one of the good things that we have, we have a great council auditor staff who lets us know. And, and, and one thing I can say about all of my um, 18 council members, they do their research. And just like with Lot J, some of the council members felt that it was too much and they vote against it and, and the rest is history. Yeah.
I know that uh, a year ago, if we had been talking at this point, uh, you were going through it because right. at the very beginning of uh, COVID-19 and pandemic shutdown, we know that you had, had suffered through that. How do you feel about where the city is now as it seems like we're emerging from the worst of this pandemic? I think the, the city is moving in, 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 in a good good space. I think we're doing really good. I think Mayor Curry did a good job you know, with the pandemic. And I think um, Governor DeSantis, in Florida did a good job, so I think we're moving really forward with that. And like you said, I, I was actually the fourth case here in Jacksonville, and I'm full of recovery, you know, no side effects or anything. Uh, it's great to hear. Uh, we know some, some of our friends uh, are still dealing with, with side effects. So final question for you, in another year, looking back at the year that Sam Newby was the council president, what would you say would make that a success? A year from now, we look back, what made it a successful turn? Well, if all the goals that I talked about is achieved, that would make it a success. If we can move downtown a little closer, that would make it a success. Yeah, I appreciate the time. I know that uh, it is challenging to take those leadership steps. It's challenging even to get to the point where your colleagues say, yeah, we're going to give you that responsibility. So thank you so much for the time. But thank you. That's success. Thank you. All right, thank you. All right, so stay with us. Another member of city council is with us in just a moment. Jacoby Pittman on her fight for the people who live in the Hilltop Village Apartments. That's next on This Week in Jacksonville. Here at Fair and Farrah, there is one thing we never forget. It's not about us. It's all about you. Fair and Farrah. Hey, Kim. With 5% cash back on travel purchase through Chase from Freedom Unlimited, you're always earning. Book that hotel, Kim, because you are worth it. I am worth it. Earn 5% on travel purchase through Chase and so much more. Chase, make more of what's yours. Exceptional offers at your local Audi dealer. Practice random jacks of kindness. Sign the pledge on positivelyjacks.com. Great parties start by recycling the new ball aluminum cup. In about 60 days, the recycled aluminum can return as part of other infinitely recyclable, lightweight yet sturdy cups. Bringing out the best in cold drinks and lifting up any get together. So enjoy. Reuse just a few times if you like, and then recycle the new ball aluminum cup because the party starts here. Find us in your store's disposable section and choose aluminum over plastic. We're gonna be late. Oh, so Teddy's coming with us. He has to. Oh, what have you been feeding him? It's moments like these when you'll appreciate the extra space in a Volkswagen. The 2021 Atlas Atlas Cross Sport and Tiguan have more passenger volume than their respective Toyota competitors. Life fits in a Volkswagen. Come into your Volkswagen dealer today and get 0% APR financing for 60 months on the 2021 Tiguan S or lease one for just $229 per month. It's a fact. More people die from medical malpractice than in car accidents. If you suspect a doctor or a hospital is to blame for an injury, call Farrah and Farrah. We specialize in these types of cases. Farrah and Farrah, here for you, here for good. Your go-to weather app just got a hundred times better. The new Weather Authority app. Everything you need to know right on the homepage from the team you know and trust. And easy to read radar with custom layers and one tap storm tracking. Personalized weather alerts when and where you need them the most. Stay alert of local storm damage and find important supplies near you with Snapchat. No clutter, no clicking around. Just your forecast fast. Download the new Weather Authority app today. Just search for News 4 Jacks in your app store. You're watching This Week in Jacksonville with Kent Justice. Thanks for staying with us today. So Jacoby Pittman is with us for the very first time on our show, <laughs> member of city council in Jackson, Jacksonville, leader of the Claire White mission. I was going to say coming up on 30 years, but this last week was an anniversary for yes, you. Yes, 28, 28 whole years. years. 
Yeah. Uh, clearly a lot of important work that you've done there. Uh, we could do a whole show just on the work <laughs> that Claire White Mission does. So thank you for that. Uh, let's, let's start here. Uh, how do you feel about the, this just this last segment? I had the incoming council president. We know Terrence Freeman's going to be vice president. This is historic. Uh, what does this say to you that the Jacksonville City Council moves in this direction? Two men of color are, are leading in this next term. Well, you know what? I think it's a trailblazing opportunity. It's momentous in this time and this place in our community and in our country that we have two men who are capable, who are leaders, who have shown themselves that they're ready for this position and they're ready to do the work um, of the job. You know, I've known them before they got to council and they were voices of the community then and they're now and they continue to be voices of the community. And I'm really happy to just be working side by side with them. You know, this, this year has been, you know, very trying. Mm -hmm. we've, we, we've dealt with a lot of issues, but through it all, um, we have made it and we are still together and our efforts is to continue. You know, for me to have two African-American men that even my son, can look up to and say, you know, I can come back to this community and I can do the same, or young people who see um, African-American males that look like them. Yeah, it, 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 like you said, this could be a seminal moment of uh, encouragement for other people to achieve bigger and better things. Oh, absolutely, so. and, and not only that, this is the largest amount of African-Americans that we've had on the council. You know, and, and okay. I'm just excited yeah. to be, you know, one, of the seven who's there and to continue to be a voice um, in the community. And we all work together and we all have our focus, yeah. um, but at the end of the day, we need each other to make sure that legislation gets out and take care of the citizens yeah. that voted us in. Well, so I initially asked you here to talk about something you're doing to take care of citizens in Jacksonville. Let's look at this issue with these apartments near 45th and Moncrief. <laughs> Huge rodent problem at uh, the Village Hilltop, mm -hmm. uh, Hill, 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 Hilltop, Hilltop Village, excuse mm -hmm. me. Mm -hmm. um, what uh, are you trying to see happen there? Because this is since our investigative team, Jennifer Waugh, got involved in this oh, in April. Je uh, listen, Jennifer broke the story. I saw it on television and I was livid. Um, as being a councilwoman, you know, and me and my early career started out in public housing. And so I wanted to be a voice and talk to the residents and see if we can come up with the solution. Yeah, I want you to keep talking. What we were showing there, we were just showing video of some of the issue. Oh, yeah. Rat infestation, and that's just kind of tip of the iceberg, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's a very graphic uh, situation conditions of, you know, my oldest person that lives over there is 94 years old and have lived in conditions like that. Yeah. Um, you know, she's lived there for 25 years. And so um, I'm very um, upset, um, want things done, but I don't want to move people out where it's a disadvantage. There's a lot of moving parts. We've talked to HUD. We've had code enforcement out there every week. Um, I, I must give a shout out to Iris Hinton um, and the women who live at Hilltop. We went to all 14 buildings and knocked on doors and we went inside of each of the departments. And you know, I brought my, I brought my list here. I have about eight pages here of, you know, These are all the inside. apartment buildings? These are all the apartments that we went in and together um, we wanted to make sure that we let the management know that we will, will not put up with the yeah. conditions like this and for people to live. It's unsanitary. Um, the many rodents that's in there. Um, we want to do something now. We've met with HUD. Um, we've had um, C Congressman Al Lawson involved. Um, Senator Rubio's office has been mm -hmm. involved. And so, you know, this is bigger than me. And as I said from the beginning that we would have um, city, state, and federal government involved. And we're waiting to June 30th for Cambridge management um, to repair these apartments. And we're also waiting for HUD to do their REACT um, inspection. But as far as the city, they're doing their due yeah. diligence 
every week, and I'm there every week to make sure that they're doing what they need to well, do. Well, we, we were there. We caught video of city inspectors yeah. doing their job, doing Absolutely. what you asked them to do. Really what was demanded once this all came out, right? And, right. and it took... Uh, these citizens saying, okay, I'm fed up and I'm not getting the help I need and let me let someone know. Right. Uh, right. So what can happen from here? Because when we first started investigating, the property manager wasn't very helpful. Has that mm -hmm. changed? And is there some hope for the people who live here? Well, because the work is so extensive, I'm not sure if they're going to be ready by June 30th. And that's the deadline from HUD. HUD would go back in and re-inspect the apartments. Um, the code enforcers, they're there. They've even looked at my list to make sure that we get all of the residents that live. But we have individuals who have cancer, um, that have upper res respiratory issues. We need to get them out immediately. And I'm so thankful to my colleagues. Last week, there was funding that has been allocated $140,000 to get those individuals out before we go on vacation. That's huge. It's a game changer. And those families that need to get out immediately, we're going to work with them and make that happen. So $140,000 is what you just mentioned. Where does that go or how does it help That them? will help individuals who are in conditions that are deplorable and need to get out right now. And so you know, this, a lot of those So will put them children, in a hotel or something yeah, in the we, meantime? Yes, a temporary okay. um, housing um, or hotels, and at least to those apartments are fixed um, because right now they shouldn't be there. Um, we have actually more children than actually adults out there. And, and so, you know, in our um, inspections, there were 126 kids. And so um, we need to make sure that at least wow. 26 of those kids get out immediately. Yeah. So I, I appreciate hearing that. I know this is more in depth than we can do in just a short story know, during the news. I know, cast, but I'm just but glad that you're doing this because yeah. it's important that the community knows what's happening. Yeah, and probably important for those uh, property managers to understand well, that we're going to hold we, them accountable. Well, well not right? only they they know what they need to do, and we are expecting that. And um, stay tuned. Yeah. for the next Ooh, that phase. Was, that was a really good team. So this is the first time we've visited on our show, but you're coming back because that was a really good uh, way to say keep watching. Too. Yes. <laughs> hey, Council Member Jacoby Pittman, thank you so much no, for your thank time. thank you. I appreciate it. All right. So stay with us in final topic. We're going to hear from a developer in just a moment. He's uh, got a different plan than the most recent Jaguars proposal. How do you feel about growth in downtown Jackson? Should it happen? We'll explore that. Stay with us. I'm Morgan, and there's more to me than HIV. More love, more adventure, more community. But with my HIV treatment, there's not more medicines in my pill. I talk to my doctor and switch to fewer medicines with Devato. Devato is for some adults who are starting HIV-1 treatment or replacing their current HIV-1 regimen. With just two medicines and one pill, Devato is as effective as a three-drug regimen to help you reach and stay undetectable. Research shows people who take HIV treatment as prescribed and get to and stay undetectable can no longer transmit HIV through sex. Don't take Devato if you're allergic to its ingredients or if you take Defetilide. Taking Devato with Defetilide can cause serious or life-threatening side effects. Hepatitis B can become harder to treat while on Devato. Don't stop Devato without talking to your doctor as your hepatitis B may worsen or become life-threatening. Serious or life-threatening side effects can occur including allergic reactions, lactic acid buildup, and liver problems. If you have a rash and other symptoms of an allergic reaction, stop Devato and get medical help right away. Tell your doctor if you have kidney or liver problems, or if you are, may be, or plan to be pregnant. Devato may harm your unborn baby. Use effective birth control while on Devato. Do not breastfeed while taking Devato. Most common side effects are headache, nausea, diarrhea, trouble sleeping, tiredness, and anxiety. So much goes into who I am. HIV medicine is one part of it. Ask your doctor about Dubato. I did. If you've been injured, Harold and Harold will turn your pain into healing. We walk alongside our clients through a difficult time in their lives and help them to be whole again. If you've been injured, let us help you. Harold and Harold, don't settle for less than you deserve. Ah, the tailored comfort of Quilted Northern. When you return home to the comfort of your childhood bedroom, 
There's nothing else you'd rather see. No offense, Mr. Cuddles. Quilted Northern. Four cup holders. For all the water the internet told you to drink. Alexa, for finding the nearest bathroom. Bathroom. The 2021 Toyota Corolla. Right now, lease a new 2021 Toyota Corolla LE for just $199 a month for 36 months. Toyota, let's go places. Have you tried the 4-in-1 power of Persil Oxy Discs? They remove tough stains, deliver fiber care, freshness, and a deep clean. Try Persil Oxy Discs. With a SunTrust checking account, you can deposit checks and pay bills on our mobile app. So you can bank with a few taps from virtually anywhere. You're watching This Week in Jacksonville on Channel 4. So what's going to happen with the former Jacksonville Landing and other demolished sites in downtown? That's a repeated question since the old city hall and courthouse came down, along with the reduction to rubble of the landing. Well, Steve Atkins leads Southeast Development Group. He's joining us this morning. And Steve, I'd love for you to, to tell us about this massive proposal that right. you guys just announced here beginning of the month. Uh, and then we'll show you some of the in images that you shared. But sure. tell me about this. It's, it's big. It is big. It's, a, it's an ambitious plan, which is what we think Jacksonville needs. Um, we approached this um, over the last couple of years in studying downtown Jacksonville. We're already invested in downtown and developing other sites. And it was apparent to us in talking to our tenants, both commercial and multifamily tenants, that they are really interested in seeing Jacksonville take the next step. Um, we all know there's a lot of energy around downtown right now. And so we took an approach that is really a master plan for the North Bank. Uh, there's a lot of great things happening around downtown. Um, many of those are through master plans. And so we felt like that the North Bank is probably the most important site that we need to address. And so we took that approach there as well. It's a big plan. It's, uh, it's proposed eventually as a public-private partnership. We just made our vision statement, if you will, to the DIA and to the city along with the public um, and shown really what we think the entire site can be from a highest and best mm -hmm. use standpoint. So, so let's show some of these images that, sure. that your, your group showed here. Riverfront Jacksonville, and so talking about 2.3 million square feet, mixed use programs. Mm -hmm. The focus, as you guys talked about it, was, is really, hey, we want to maximize that we're on the bank of the St. Johns River, right? Right, this is really the face of Jacksonville. Um, in any of your broadcast, I mean, you look ac across the river at, yeah. this, at this site. So it's important that we do this uh, the right way. We really maybe only have the one chance at getting this right for the next 40, 50 years. So um, it's important that we put together the right plan, the right elements uh, that the city really wants, that the community wants. That probably starts with a, a big green space. Uh, I think there's a lot of energy around downtown parks and something that we can create for the community as a whole. Uh, so that we can have equity throughout, our, throughout the riverfront for everyone in Jacksonville. We think that's important. Um, but we also think that it's just as important to activate that green space, that park space the right way with commercial development. And whether that be through new hotel or multifamily or even condominium, um, we're putting, we've put forth a vision that really incorporates all of those things in what we think is, a, is the right balance uh, for, for downtown Jacksonville. So let me bring this up. Two weeks ago, uh, we had the Downtown Investment Authority CEO Lori Boyer with us, and we, we talked about the Jaguars plan that's, right. that, that's been talked about. And then she said, talking about your plan, this is a vision plan. Steve Atkins has been working on this quite some time. It includes both public and privately owned property. So from our perspective, this is not something DIA initiated or worked on in any way in several of those parcels are already subject to other open procurement processes. Right. What's that mean to you? It just sounds like there's some hurdles to overcome if, if the vision that you laid out were to right. come to pass. Well, again, we laid out a very holistic vision for the entire riverfront, for the entire downtown North Bank yeah. that's not inclusive of what the, the Jaguars are, are doing at the shipyards. This is the section of, of downtown from really uh, east of the Times Union Center for Performing Arts all the way down to the Berkman Plaza. There is a lot of open vacant space now that's been created, as you mentioned at the beginning of the interview, uh, that really affords us an opportunity to do something bold and something that's very cohesive, 
uh, that works hand in hand with some of the other things that downtown is and, and the DIA are looking at. We're aware that there is a, an ongoing process looking at designs for a park space. Um, we want to make sure that we are inclusive of those efforts and uh, be collaborative with the DIA as well as any other parcels that may have uh, outstanding RFPs. So what we're really looking to do is to be um, a partner with the city to put forth a, a plan that takes into all the best ideas and to really put forward a, uh, a goal for the downtown that's, that's important for everyone. So $1.1 billion, 25 acres, the city's chief of staff told us uh, when you announced that the plan may line up with what the mayor's office wants and what the DIA wants. Is that encouraging to you? It is. Um, you know, we, we've worked closely with the DIA on other projects as well. We know uh, that they have their own thinking in terms of what a master plan looks like for downtown. And what we've done is put a lot of thought and effort into those plans to it aligns with, with a lot of the things that Jacksonville uh, from a city standpoint as well as the public standpoint are looking to do. It, maybe we wrap up here, but when the plan came out, we, uh, we asked people during our newscast, we said, hey, what do you think about this? Is this going to happen? And there's a lot of people who say, you know what, whether it's the Jaguars plan or another plan, it's yeah. just another plan and it's yeah. never going to happen. What would you say to folks who kind of are you know, dismissive or down on the idea of are we really going to develop downtown? Well, <clears throat> as a native Jacksonvillian, I've seen many plans uh, for downtown and uh, being involved in downtown development for, a, for some time, um, it can be disheartening uh, to see new plans, new renderings that don't go anywhere. What's unique about this plan and what I'm very um, excited about is the fact that we have already have a financial team at the table with us with the monies at the table to make these things happen. Goldman Sachs and Piper Sandler and Company are some of the world's largest financial institutions, and they've pledged the billion dollars that, uh, that this plan can look like. Now, the billion dollars is obviously a large budget, and it's inclusive of a lot of things. In fact, it's inclusive of a lot of things that the city's already contemplated in doing, like a new river walk, a new marina, or even a park space. Um, Infrastructure is going to be very important. Thirty seconds left. Sure. Sure. Uh, but so we're we're very we're very excited about the the feedback that we're getting. Literally thousands of people messaging us about we're excited about downtown. Yeah. No. It, it really stood out to see the images of the vision. And, and Steve, I appreciate it. Steve Atkins, thanks thank for your you. time. Today. Thank you, Ken. I appreciate it. All right. So Congresswoman Kat Kamek has agreed to join us next time. And one of the topics, her leadership of the new Congressional Campus Free Speech Caucus. This Week in Jacksonville airs each Sunday morning at this time. I'm Kat Justice. Thanks for watching on air on Channel 4 and the CW17. And you can find episodes online at news4jax.com. Every day, more people are choosing News 4 Jax, Northeast Florida and South Georgia's number one source for local news.